morning. Uh, welcome to everybody who's listening and, and going to be seeing this at home also. We welcome you. And with that, we are going to start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In prayer, we speak to our Heavenly Father. We pray, our Father who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that He is our true Father and that we are His true children, so that with all boldness and confidence we may ask Him as dear children ask their dear Father. Let us come before our Father in heaven in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I cry to you, O Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with the living spirit. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. Every day I will bless you. And praise your name forever and ever. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And let my cry come to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's message comes to us from Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Hor Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. Yet the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. God called to him out, God called out, to, out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that I have sent you. And when you have brought the people out of Egypt, 
You shall serve God on this mountain. This is the word of the God of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And by the fire, and 
It was the angel of the Lord that called out to him and appeared to him. Now, in the Bible, sometimes we, we, we have two things, an angel of the Lord or the angel of the Lord. And sometimes we think of the angel of the Lord as his specific angel or his messenger or his word. So we think maybe this is maybe Jesus to, you know, years and years later. All right, so this is uh, before Jesus was born. Then, he went to get closer, and we heard from the story that you know, uh, God told him to take his sandals off. He's on holy, holy land, or holy ground. And then Moses um, listened to God talk about how he wanted to save the children of Israel. And then, he, you know, Moses was kind of funny. You know, he didn't want to go back, maybe, to, to Israel, because, you know, Pharaoh, those guys might have been looking for him. He murdered one of the one of the Egyptians. And that may have been one reason, but there may be some others. And maybe it was that uh, he was very comfortable with what he was doing. He didn't want to, didn't want to change what he was doing. He was had a nice life. So he has excuses. All right? okay, here's one of his excuses. He says to God, well, you know, who am I uh, to go talk to you know, Pharaoh about about this issue, right? He might, have, he might have said something like, are you sure you got the right guy here? You know? And uh, God said, you know, I'm going to be with you. You will get your words from me. And then he also said later on, he, he said, well, you know, um, what am I going to tell the people of Israel when I get there? You know, that I'm, the, I'm, I'm from, you know, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're going to say, uh, what's his name? Who, and then, so how should I say that, Lord? And the Lord said, God said to him, I am who I am. And he says, say to the people of Israel that I am sent you. So God dispels another one of his complaints or trying to get out of the whole thing. There's one, another one also. He comes to the Lord later in, in chapter 4 and he goes, you know, I'm not a very good speaker, Lord. Maybe maybe somebody else should go. In fact, he says, send somebody else right to, right to God. You know, and, and God says, no, no, you have a brother named Aaron, don't you? We'll use him to speak for you. Okay, so no matter what he, no matter what Moses, what he said and what he tried to get out of it, right? God said, "No, you're going, and here's I'm going to help you through this, just like He does with us in our lives." So sometimes you and I, we have excuses for not doing God's will in our lives, also, don't we? We have excuses for all kinds of stuff, you know, that we know we're supposed to be sharing, you know, the gospel with us. But we say, oh, you know, maybe there's somebody better qualified than me that knows more of the Bible than I do. Or, or you know, I'm, I'm pretty busy right now. Maybe maybe next week if the, if the Lord puts somebody in my path. You know, there's a lot of different way, things we can say to get out of, you know, what the Lord really wants us to do. You know, but he sent his son for us. And he saved us from all of our sins. And he wants everybody to have that same salvation. So it's for us to overcome some of our, you know, our sinful procrastinating, I guess, if you could call it that, a dragging of our feet or wanting to do only what we want to do instead of God's will. And do, do His will and help help other people hear about the Lord God. Oh, saved us all from our sins. Saved us on the cross and rose on Easter morning. We can share that with other people. And uh, that would be a big help to them. Amen. At this time, then, it would be a good time to bring your offerings up to the front of the classroom. Normally, when we would meet in, in, the, in the sanctuary here, we would bring them up onto the altar. But this morning, bring that up to your teacher up front. Okay? Thank you. And at this time now, let's pledge or confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
this time, also we're going to pray the Luther's morning prayer. So fold your hands and fold above your heads. I thank, thank you, my heavenly my Father, 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 through Jesus Christ, Christ your dear, dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And, 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 and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, evil, that all I do is my life please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. As is our tradition, we turn and look at the American flag and put our hands over our hearts and pledge allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.